go. All right, taking um, <laughs> verse 1 of 2 Corinthians 1. This letter is from Paul, appointed by God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus, and from our dear brother Timothy. We are writing to God's church in Corinth and to all the Christians throughout Greece. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you his grace and peace. All praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the source of every mercy and the God who comforts us. He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. When others are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. You can be sure that more, the more we suffer for Christ, the more God will shower us with his comfort through Christ. So when we are weighed down with troubles, it is for your benefit and salvation. For when God comforts us, it is so that we in turn can be an encouragement to you. Then you can patiently endure the same things we suffer. We are confident that as you share in suffering, you will also share God's comfort. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's not too bad here. We're starting off really well. But, um, but it is just a reminder that, um, <clears throat> that Paul started the church in Corinth. He started it, um, and he wasn't able to travel there. And so uh, they had a lot of questions. They had a lot of sin. They had a lot of issues. So he wrote 1 Corinthians. Mm -hmm. And honestly, like, I, I truly believe, like, he was like, okay, I'm coming. I'm coming over. Just hold on. I'm going to come and see you. <clears throat> you know, the church in Corinth, I'm going to say they're babies. They're babies, and they, because <laughs> they're baby Christians, living in a crazy land. Like, yeah, Corinth was nasty. Like, it, remember we talked about it last, it's like the Vegas, mm -hmm. um, except what happened in Corinth didn't stay in Corinth. <laughs> it was, it was a place of, of real sin. Sodom and Gomorrah-esque. Yes, exactly. Like, you know, it, it was a crazy place. And so, what a great place to start a church. That's great. <laughs> But it ended up that, you know, that it was it was it was hard to uh, <laughs> to grow um, in maturity and they they needed some help and they were asking questions. And so, you know, thank you, Apostle Paul, for listening to God and writing this. But he sent Titus, I believe I'm going to say Titus. He sent Titus and um, and he came back and he's like, they really want to see you. And then he got delayed again. So he wrote another letter. He wrote another letter. And that is 2 Corinthians. And there's a lot of encouragement um, within here. He's going to talk about who he is. There must have maybe been some questioning about his authority. I'm not sure because he sure lists um, his credentials per se. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> this is a baby, a baby church. They were kind of... They were crying, right? They were hungry. They needed their diaper changed. <laughs> they, you know, like they they needed right. some. They needed a lot of guidance and a lot did. of a lot of hand holding. Um, I think also too because they this is all they knew. They didn't know any other way of yes. being. Um, <clears throat> you know, those that were Greek didn't weren't Jewish. You know, they didn't grow up. Yes. In being Jewish, mm -hmm. um, so having those kinds of um, parameters, traditions of, yeah. of lifestyle, you yeah. know, of, of rules and guidelines to go by. Um, so this was a whole new world. It's like, I got to do what? I got to do, huh? Why yeah. do I have to do Why that? Why do I have to do that? Yeah. And why so, can't we just have all the old rules of right. the Old Testament? Like, uh, you know, I mean, even monotheism, which means one God. Like that's new for them. So, right. you know, there's some, there's some people and you know them too. Like there's some people that have been saved and they've, they've had to come a long way, mm -hmm. um, you know, to arrive at where they are. And then there's some people who are like, ah, they were already good people or decent, whatever, you know. So or, I love it when they said <clears throat> that they were spiritual. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, <laughs> yeah, we have no idea what that means. Either you love Jesus or you don't, but um, but it's just a reminder of what's going on, and and so Paul is, the Apostle Paul is, is gonna um, 
this one, this book of, of the Bible is, is kind of the hardest uh, to categorize. And, you know, like usually the scholars outline, they outline these books. And they say like, you know, like these verses, these chapters are, you know, for comfort. And these chapters are for Christian living. These chapters are for, and they said that this one is kind of a, a hard one to categorize, like a hard one to uh, to group because there's a whole bunch of things kind of going on. Like some of the minor ideas end up being the major idea of a passage. This is all how the scholars break it down. But but basically, this whole this whole beginning part, these first few chapters are are kind of just Christian living. So um, so we're going to go through and 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 look at all of this. So. Anyway, back to the scriptures. <clears throat> and Jen read 1 through 7. <clears throat> Jen read 1 through 7. And this is kind of Paul's, like, it's kind of his normal opening. Yes. You know, the whole the whole grace and peace and, and you Beauty know. his credentials. And, yeah. You know. He yeah. And, is a servant of God. and Yes. <clears throat> exactly. And and I love, he um, he throws in Timothy there. Um, sometimes he calls Timothy his son mm-hmm. in, in, in the faith. Um, but this time he says our, so he says, Timothy, our brother, like, mm-hmm. Hey, you Corinthians, me, the apostle Paul, Timothy's our brother. But I love how, um, I love how he's elevating Timothy because the apostle Paul, I mean, let's, I mean, the guy's brilliant. The guy's amazing. How many missions did he go on? How many you know, he was beaten. He, I mean, he he did a lot, um, and he had incredible faith. But he brought Timothy right up. Mm-hmm. You know, this this guy that he's, you know, that literally he's kind of like mentoring. Uh, he brought him right. He's like, yep, he's our brother, and uh, and gave elevated his his credentials. Right, elevated Timothy's credentials. So that's pretty cool. And I think also too, he he was being <clears throat> humble. Yes, he was. He was saying yes. He was, you know, appointed mm. by God to be an apostle, but still also bringing himself down to, hey, I'm just like you, though. I'm just like you. I'm a, I'm a brother in Christ. We're, yeah. we're, we're the same. We're all serving the same God. We're all heading the same direction. That's it. That's it. Let's see. Karen said um, he is assuring them that God will bless others as they remain faithful in their troubles. Yes, so let's get into that. Yes. Because <clears throat> suffering. <laughs> yeah. Let's get into some good old fashioned suffering. And mm-hmm. um, Jen and I, we pray every morning uh, for people with, uh, with cancer. We pray for, um, for, Karen's, for Karen's dad this morning. And so um, we were talking about suffering and how um, it's awful and it's horrible. But I'll tell you, there is no time in my life when I was more dependent on God Mm -hmm. or just begging him, right, for mercy, for love, for comfort, for anything. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's interesting that there's there's like a real, is there a pause? I don't know what the word is. There's a positive side to suffering. Um, So... You know, if you're here on our on our chat feature, like, you know, maybe you'd like to to comment on that, or maybe there's a time in your life when you were suffering, but out of it came greater faith, um, a closeness with God. You know, maybe you reconciled with family or friends because you couldn't do it on your own, and you figured that out along the way, or you came to know Christ because uh, you. You couldn't do it on your own. Yeah, you're at the bottom. <clears throat> you couldn't do it on your own, and you needed, you needed him. You, we need him every day, right? But mm-hmm. there's something about suffering that really strips away um, our pride and our ability to muscle mm-hmm. through it. Um, because, hey, you know, you have some money in your bank, you can probably solve that problem, you know, or, or whatever. I mean, fill in the blank. Um, but yeah, it's suffering is, uh, yeah, anyway, so, um, but it talked to, it talks about in, in three through five, first it talks about 
comfort, and it says um, being comforted can mean receiving strength, encouragement, and hope mm -hmm. to deal with our troubles. And so the more we suffer, the more comfort God gives us. And, uh, and then it says if you're feeling overwhelmed, allow God to comfort you. Um, what a blessing that is. And it says remember that every trial you endure will help you comfort other people who are suffering similar troubles. Um, Absolutely. Do you have a story like that? Because <laughs> oh, I have a story sure. like that. Jen mm -hmm. has a story like that. Um, and I think I can speak for us both that neither of us wanted oh, the no. stories that we have. No. Um, no thank you. <laughs> no. But, but I, I for myself, I, I do believe that <clears throat> if me going through it helps, and I'm sure you feel the same way, helps somebody else, then it was worth it. Yeah, I mean, okay, it it's easier to it. say that now. It is when you're <laughs> when you're in the midst of it, you're like, oh, yeah. But but when you when you come out the other side, um, you're like, okay, I, I I get it now. I get it. Mm -hmm. I get why I may have had to go through this. I I you know if I can help somebody else get through it. Mm -hmm. And I've always said, because my, my big thing is, is anxiety, panic attacks. And um, you get to a point where you're desperate. You're desperate. You just want it to stop. And, uh, and, and in that, you can really start to lose hope that you're ever going to have any, any normalcy again. Yeah, absolutely. And so <clears throat> having somebody, right, who said, hey, I know, I know where you've been. Um, you know, and, and and God's in it with you, and God will help you get out of it. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, that literally just having even somebody tell you that when you are hopeless, mm -hmm. and when you're just twirling at the bottom of the valley, you know, it, it's everything. And that's the first thing I say is, I go, I would have never been able to get through it without my faith mm -hmm. and without God. Mm -hmm. There's no way. Yeah. I would have been able to do it on my own yeah, without being on my knees every day <laughs> saying, God, help me yeah. get through this. Yeah, exactly. I know you're going, and I would say, I know you're going to get me through this. I know it. I believed it with, and I still do, mm -hmm. but I believed it with every fiber of my being. I knew he was going to get me through it. I didn't know when, I didn't know how, I didn't know any of that, but I knew that he was not going to leave me there. Yeah, yeah. Lord, make a way. Karen says, God uses the suffering to help us turn away from doing everything in our strength mm -hmm. and turn to God's strength. Yep. That is so beautiful, Karen. Thank you so much. That's exactly it. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you're on the other side of suffering, um, you can kind of see. But gosh, if you're in the midst of suffering right now, um, you know, and please don't hesitate to, you don't have to say what you're going through, but, you know, you can always just throw in the chat thing, like, I need prayer. We have a prayer host here. Um, John is here, and he can pray for you right now um, and and help you find that hope and that encouragement in God because it it is quite beyond us sometimes. Okay, most of the time. It's quite <laughs> beyond us, and, and we need that, and we, and we need our community. Um, and we're hoping that we can be that community for you, you know, I mean, I know we're online and, and all that stuff, but hey, we're, we're right here and we're interested and God's interested. So what a blessing that is. So, and when, just as we're talking, oh, as we're talking about, you know, comfort and we're talking about suffering, I just want to throw this in there. Um, it's a verse widely misquoted. Mm. And it's, you know, the verse of, of God, or people will say, God won't give you more than you can handle. Ooh. 100% not accurate. <laughs> it is That's... not accurate. It is not in the Bible. It is yes. not worded that way. It is wrong. So yeah. um, I implore you, don't ever use that. <laughs> To comfort somebody, I know you're trying to comfort somebody, but that is not biblically accurate. It's First Corinthians ten, thirteen. So we we handled it last 
uh, book, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, and it says, No temptation has seized you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out mm -hmm. so that you can stand up under it. So he says he won't tempt you beyond what you can bear. That's not the same as he will not give you more than you can bear or more than you can handle. Because if you've ever talked to somebody who has crippling anxiety, who has cancer, who lost a child, right? How can you say, but that's not more than you that you can handle. It's more than it's, it's more, more than, they, than can they can handle. Like ask them in the moment. It's definitely more than they can handle. But God says he he will never leave us. Mm -hmm. But this verse, First Corinthians ten thirteen says, He will not allow us to be tempted more than we can bear. Mm -hmm. That's something different. And I always remember the, the you know the stories about you know like. If you, if you don't want to be alone with your boyfriend and you feel like you are always tempted to, to go into, you know, sexual things that are not allowed by God's design, like just pray and, you know, and you'd be amazed how many people will come and interrupt you and interfere and it is good. Um, <laughs> and I tell my teenagers that all the time. Um, he will not allow you to be tempted more than you can bear. Mm -hmm. um, what is John saying? John says, suffering is what it takes for us to understand that Jesus is the only one we can re really trust at all times for the comfort we need <clears throat> at that time. Yep. So true. Thank you, John. That's, that's so good. Yeah. So here we are talking about suffering. In verse 6, it says, but if we are afflicted, it is for your comfort and salvation. Um, <laughs> that's... That sounds that sounds awful. I, that sounds awful. I get it, but you know, but it says, but just as God comforted Paul, God would also comfort the Corinthian believers when they suffered for their faith, um, and He would give them the strength to endure, and that's what we get. We get the strength to endure. We get encouragement. We get, and we and we give it. You know, God uses each of us, right, mm -hmm. to to give it to other people to share comfort. To share encouragement, share strength, you know, like, hey, you know, I know that, you know, that this sort of thing puts me up over the edge. So, you know, maybe I will call my Christian sister and say, you know, can you help me through this? Can you go with me to my cancer checkups? Can you, you know, it's like, hey, and that's what the Christian community is really great for. Um, and I'm really, I'm sure that that's part of why we're here, right? Part of the body is to, you know, the ear lifts up the eye, lifts up the toe, lifts up the thumb. Whatever you part you are of the Christian body, you need. You can't be you can't be a thumb out on your own. You got mm -mm. you got no blood. You got no life. You need to be part of the body. So, um, I don't know. Did we cover everything? I think so. Up till there, we're sharers of our comfort. Be sharers of the comfort. Amen. And I think also, too, is just part of being a Christian is you are going to be attacked. Yeah. That's, it's just the Not reality. If, but when? Yeah, it's just the reality. And, you know, Satan is going to attack. He may attack your finances, those around you, your job, your personal being. There's all kinds of forms of attacks. Um, and... And so, you know, there may be suffering along with those attacks, um, but mm -hmm. we're not immune as being a Christian. You're not immune to suffering. Yeah. Yeah. We don't get to like, get, I mean, can you, you imagine like, <laughs> yeah, if we got a free pass, everybody would be Christian. Exactly. They'd be like, oh yeah. So, you know, so it's almost like it doesn't even work in God's plan. Right. Um, There's been so many attacks I know, especially when, when um, the the church, our our church here, puts on events. Uh. It is everybody's like, get ready, because it's somebody's ready. gonna somebody's gonna get kind of attacked. I know you have been, you know, Tina's, you've been attacked by like laryngitis and sickness and poor kids John. Sick. John's yeah. been hit John before. John usually gets like his knees, his hips, his back, his right. I mean, and like out of the blue, it's like wow. Yeah. Come so on. when you're doing God's work, when you are when you are out there, when you are doing what you should be doing for the Lord, 
be prepared. Be prepared for there to be setbacks and, and there to be a little bit of suffering going on. But when you persevere and you continue to trust God through it, he, the reward is always, always. The reward's pretty awesome. Always better. Yeah. I think sometimes, I, you know, John always says, you know, if it's not, if it's not, or it's going to be good if we, if we, the, the outcome is going to be fantastic mm -hmm. if we all have some some significant setbacks. Well, well, they all they uh, <laughs> you you hear all the time too. Like you know, obviously there's something good's going to happen if if the devil's attacking it. Yes. Right. Yes. Because it's like what thieves don't break into empty houses. Yes. That kind of scenario. It's like you. Hey, there's something treasure. There's some kind of treasure that's there that Satan does not want to have bloom. That's right. Yes, that's it. Uh, see, Karen said uh, these new believers were all were also were being beginning a new way of living that was different from the lives they'd been living, and different from their community. We have the example of hundreds of years of the Christian church, but these believers were the first believers so they had few people to look to for examples and strength which is absolutely, absolutely. true absolutely yeah i mean it, and that's that's always the thing right is that kind of like well why did it how how could they not know or it, it's yeah like why yourself, were they such babies yeah well, put like, yourself in their in hard. their shoes and even like the pharisees and sadducees you know were always really hard on them right and because in in matthew mark luke and john they we're all like how could they not see even the disciples themselves how did the disciples not see all of this well it, it's all put out <laughs> it's all put together for us in this beautiful yeah, we've got book Heinz 2020 yeah hindsight. it's all we we know what happens mm -hmm. you know so it's much easier for us to say like how could they not know i'm sure when we're long gone there's going to be people that are been like, how did they not know? Yeah. How how did those American Christians who had it so easy, mm -hmm. why weren't they out, you know, you know, whatever, right. bringing thousands of people to Christ every single day? You know, mm -hmm. it's like, why were they so lazy? And that, yeah, we're, we're going to have to probably answer for that <laughs> because because we're not we're not heavily persecuted here. It's not, you know, this we isn't China. To, this we isn't, don't have to yeah. work for it. There's people in other countries that if they're found with the Bible, they will die. That's crazy, right? So I mean, would, right now in you, Egypt and yeah, you know in other places, China, it it can be very crazy. And here we are. We, you know, I've got whatever three Bibles in my car. I got a whole bunch of Bibles at home, and I can read them, and I can I can have them on my shirts. So, yeah, I mean. I can do whatever I want. And some people might say, oh, you're a crazy Christian. Okay, you're a Jesus good. freak. I Thank you. Right? <laughs> and I'm like, is that it? Is that my persecution? Like, people might not like me. Like, oh, wow. I'm, I'm embarrassed because, yeah, because that's, that's not really persecution. No. Like, Your oh. feelings got hurt. Yes. Oh, yeah. Anyway. Oh, but John says he can really give peace. That surpasses all understanding. Just what he said. That's right. I have had that peace after two wives and one son going to heaven. Mm -hmm. That's right. John has John has outlived two wives and and one of his own his own children. Like you should never have to bury your children. That's that's just a pain that's so awful. And there is John. Not I mean he hasn't he hasn't stopped serving the Lord. He hasn't hiccuped. He hasn't. I, you know, I, I don't know what you go through personally, John, you know, and when in the hard times, but to me, like John's never faltered. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and even if he had, like, God be like, okay, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a double helping of peace and comfort, John, so that you can, so that you can keep fighting for the faith. And uh, John takes it and runs with it. So it's amazing. Sorry, we're we should probably move on. Exactly. There are other there are other great verses in this in this chapter. Alrighty. Well, I'm going to pick back up in verse eight of Second Corinthians one. I think you ought to know, dear brothers and sisters, about the trouble we went through in the province of Asia. We were crushed and completely overwhelmed, and we thought we would never live through it. In fact, we expected to die. 
But as a result, we learned not to rely on ourselves, but on God, who can raise the dead. And he did deliver us from mortal danger. And we are confident that he will continue to deliver us. He will rescue us because you are helping by praying for us. As a result, many will give thanks to God because so many people's prayers for our safety have been answered. Mm. Amen. So it speaks to the power of prayer. That's it. And 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 notice like he doesn't really say what the what the afflictions were, not specifically, but he says that they were expecting that they would die. Mm. Um so it may maybe it's he's like that's for a whole nother letter but that i'm sorry that that was serious yeah. that's serious cuz yeah. i don't think he's being dramatic at this point um or sarcastic i mean i i think he truly means that he thought that he was going to die so so here again just like suffering um you know leads us to 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 a more powerful faith it's that same sort of thing of like when we're in these situations, they had, they had to rely on God. It's all they had. And, um, and that powerlessness um, leads to a greater dependence. And, and again, I understand it's like super easy to just say these things. Um, but if, if you have like a life experience about this, I mean, feel free to share it in the chat. We would love to, we would love to hear all testimonies and encourage us all. But it, you know, if you've had a time where you, where you couldn't fix it, um, here comes God, right? Uh, and that's such a great lesson on how to learn to rely on God every single day. Yeah. I mean, I, I prayed, you know, if I, if I can't do it, right. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I prayed for God to put people, the right people in my path. Yeah. The right yeah. people to to help me mm -hmm. um, if I you know wasn't going to be miraculously healed, mm -hmm. you know that the right people would be put, yeah. um, which is exactly what happened. It's amazing. It's amazing. Um, and Paul then in verse eleven, then he talks about he's requesting prayer for himself and his companions as they you know as they're spreading God's message, and so it's just a great reminder, you know. Um, pray that you too can spread God's message and pray for pastors and teachers and evangelists mm -hmm. because there's nothing there's nothing that we do for God that doesn't come with opposition from the enemy you know as, mm -hmm. as God is preparing to build um, Satan is preparing to battle and so that's it it is it is just how it has always worked <laughs> since the Garden of Eden and maybe since before that um, and so we've got to be committed to to praying and um, right. and praying for others, praying that we will also um, be great disciple makers uh, for for the Lord. And we can <clears throat> um, we can have faith and hope, and we have the knowledge that God wins. God wins. God wins. So. The it's devil awesome. is going to be forever defeated, um, and we can, we can, I don't know how to say it, but we just can hold on to that, hold on, on to that, that, that yeah. no matter what happens to <clears throat> our earthly being, mm -hmm. um, our earthly being, if we remain faithful and we remain obedient and, and we worship and praise God with everything we have, we get to take part in that triumphant God wins. That's it's amazing. I was on a <clears throat> on a Zoom call this morning, and there were people on there from America. There were also people on there from um, I don't know exactly where he is. He's from, but he's in the province of of Morovia. Um, and if you know anything about the Morovians, they prayed for one hundred years straight 100 years you can you can google them um and so they were a band of christians who prayed for 100 years non-stop and out of that came like amazing um basically they say like all of our modern missions such amazing fruit and 
And this man was, he's overseas. He's like, I actually, I, I brought it up. I was like, what about the, the Moravians? And, how, you know, they're, he's like, that's so funny. Like, I'm in Moravia right now. There's another woman who was on the line, and she was like, I'm a descendant of the Moravians. And I'm like, he smokes. Like, I, I'm like, I'm in the presence of royalty. But, but you know, it's like, don't underestimate what, um, what we can do, even though we might not be able to see it. Um, another one of our friends gave this interesting story about two groups of Baptist um, churches. And one said, you know what, this winning souls thing, that's not actually what the church is supposed to do. Um, that was that was their thing. And But the other church said, that's actually what we're supposed to do. And so they went out and they did all of these things. And that, that church who said, that's not what we're supposed to do, they kind of stayed inside and they, they were just discipling their, their own body, right? They weren't like as concerned about going out. And he said that like seven generations down the line, you know, that, that one church had basically died and the other church had, had sprouted into, you know, like, I don't know, like something crazy, like 40 or 50 other churches. So it's, you know, when we're intentional about serving the Lord, we might not always see it in the moment, um, but, but when we are, when we're leaning on him and serving him and being obedient to him in prayer, in Bible study and, you know, Bible memorization even, I mean, like, and spreading the word and making disciples, that stuff is like the ripples are like something we'll see in heaven. Right. Literally. We, and you may not even live to see the fruit. You may we might not. not. And that's okay. Because, but laying the seeds is what is what we're called to do it's is laying the seeds do. and then hopefully yeah. those seeds sprout then you can you know disciple and water and go that's from right there god will work so karen says <clears throat> he is reassuring them that there is true hope in the lord mm -hmm. absolutely what a blessing and then she says the peace and the hope even while in the struggle takes complete surrender to the lord's will absolutely Ooh. yeah that's so good karen that's so good like and it's so easy to say but yeah, complete surrender is hard. It's hard. I get you. It's hard. But wow, when we can when we can do it, it actually it's actually easy, right? It actually like lifts the burden off of us because Jesus is here. Like he can carry all of our burdens. And then John says, prayer is the answer to all things, or the key to everything is prayer. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So much good stuff in 2 Corinthians, y'all. <laughs> All righty. I'm going to go ahead and pick back up in verse 15 of 2 Corinthians, or 12. Yeah, 12. Oh, sorry. Almost skipped right over that. 12. We can say with confidence and a clear conscience that we have been honest and sincere in all our dealings. We have depended on God's grace, not on our own earthly wisdom. This is how we have acted toward everyone, and especially toward you. My letters have been straightforward, and there is nothing written between the lines, and nothing you can't understand. I hope someday you will fully understand us, even if you don't fully understand us now. Then, on the day when our Lord Jesus Christ comes back again, you will be proud of us in the same way we are proud of you. I love it. I love it. And so, you know, he's just talking about, he's talking about, you know, the importance of holiness and sincerity in word and action. Mm -hmm. um, because sometimes constructive criticism is necessary. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying it's easy, but I'm saying that it's necessary. And, and I, Jen, Jen is so good at always saying this. She's like, tell me, it, tell me. I like, I yeah. like it. I like being told if I'm not doing something right or accurately or if i need to kind of yeah the, like, look at take off that that you know that the pride and mm -hmm. you know or, or the fact that you that you you think you know it all and gosh if you if you know everything about the bible i'm gonna say you're a fat liar because that is that's not <laughs> that is not possible this side of heaven i'm just saying and so we need to be open to the fact that that even children can like illuminate us mm -hmm. to to great theology that maybe we you know it's I can only imagine what it's like to be like a Bible professor 
and to be like, I know everything about it. I have a PhD. I'm, you know, and then you sit with these, you know, college kids who just like, who just like probably blow your mind with, <laughs> with like how they see theology and you're like, oh wow, I've studied that a million times and you just turned it on its head for me. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. And, and I think that's a common occurrence for people who study the Bible. That's why it's so great to study the Bible with others. That's why it's so great when you put comments in and just like Karen and John have been like, this is such good stuff. And, and we can't think of everything. We're just right. two humans here. Um, so the more brains that we put together, it's, it's just so much more powerful, right? It's just so much more powerful. So anyway, I just, but I love it because you know the, I, okay, I, you, maybe you don't know. I believe that the Apostle Paul was a brilliant man, spoke many languages, was very well educated. He was brilliant. The way that he writes, it's amazing. And he's like, hey, I'm just writing this so you can understand it. Mm -hmm. And he's, I, I won't say he's dumbing it down because that, I think that's probably offensive to smart people. But like, dumb it down for me, Paul. Mm -hmm. You know, make it so that I can understand it. Like, this is bad. This is good. God just says do this. God says don't do this. Like, just tell me. And uh, and that's what he says. He's like, I'm writing it. God's writing it so you can read it and understand it. Yeah, and he's being straightforward. Yes. And he's not, you know, he's not trying to... Um, mislead anybody or and there's nothing left unsaid yeah yeah you know it's not like where trying they to have hide to, yeah something. where yeah. they have to wonder well huh mm. you know but he's like nope do it this way <laughs> well and i think that also speaks to the people who love to um talk about um oh you know there's like um like the whole numbers thing what it what is it, the Da Vinci Code? Oh, yeah, yeah, You know, and they're like, oh, there's these codes in the Bible, and it's like, I feel like you got too much time on your hands. Like, it says, I'm writing it, and it's easy to understand. Like, you probably don't have to also, like, put a, a number to, or you can do that. God bless you if you want to do that. But I just feel like there's enough in the Bible for me to try to chew on and comprehend I probably don't have to also do that. And if I'm being lame, just tell me. But I'm just, <laughs> he says, there's nothing between the lines. I said it. I said it. Uh, see, John said, uh, it's because the Bible is the living word of God and it is alive today, just as when he walked on the earth. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yep. All righty. Well, I'm going to go ahead and pick back up in verse 15 of 2 Corinthians 1. Since I was so sure of your understanding and trust, I wanted to give you a double blessing. I wanted to stop and see you on my way to Macedonia and again on my <laughs> return trip. Then you would send me on my way to Judea. You may be asking why I changed my plan. Hadn't I made up my mind yet? Or am I like people of the world who say yes when they really mean no? As surely as God is true, I am not that sort of person. My yes means yes, because Jesus Christ, the Son of God, never wavers between yes and no. He is the one whom Timothy, Silas, and I preached to you, and he is the divine. Yes, God's affirmation for all of God's promises have been fulfilled in him. That is why we say amen when we give glory to God through Christ. It is God who gives us, along with you, the ability to stand firm for Christ. He has commanded us, and he has identified us as his own by placing the Holy Spirit in our hearts as the first installment of everything he will give us. Now I call upon God as my witness that I am telling the truth. The reason I didn't return to Corinth was to spare you from a severe rebuke, but that does not mean we want to tell you exactly how to put your faith into practice. We want to work together with you so you will be full of joys as you stand firm in your faith. Mm. So so this is, um, again, he's he has to explain a little bit because he had... 
he was he was going to sail from he was going to sail from Ephesus to Corinth before going to Macedonia, but he ended up going from Ephesus straight to Macedonia. And so his change of plans and it's, you know, and I'm sure it was warranted and I'm sure that he went with God, you know, um, and come on, our, our plans do change, right? But I like how it talks about here in the commentary, it says that Paul's change of plans caused some of his accusers to say he couldn't be trusted or to undermine his authority. Mm -hmm. And so it was important then that he took a minute to kind of explain and, you know, and say, hey, look, you know, sometimes things, sometimes things happen, right? And he said that he's not the type of person to say yes when he means no. He explained that it was not indecision, but concern for their feelings that forced him to change his plans. And the reason for his trip, which was to bring joy, um, couldn't be accomplished with the present crisis. And so, you know, it, it he it was important enough that he kind of it made that explanation and said, "Hey, look, I'm not wishy washy." And um, and Jesus has talked about in other places in the mm -hmm. Bible, like let your yes be yes, and let your no be no. Um, but he definitely felt like he needed to change his plans. And I'm gonna say he served God with all that he had, and so you know you you can't really you can't really come up against him and go, oh Paul, you should have done something different. <laughs> you know, like he's he's like, nope, there was a reason, there was a reason. But let me tell you that I, you know that I am still, um, what's the word? I'm um, you can trust me, and um, you know. So yet again, he had to kind of speak to the naysayers, I guess, who who wanted to undermine his authority. Because if they could undermine his authority, then then they could kind of throw out everything mm -hmm. that he had previously told them and is telling them now. So, sorry. Um, but uh, but did you go all the way to 22? I went all the way to the end. Oh, oh, oh you went all the way to 24. Mm hmm I, didn't, I was sleeping at the wheel there, sorry. Um, so in 21 and 22, he talks about um, two gifts that, um, that we, or, or, or God gives us two things here when we become believers. Number one, the seal of ownership to show who our master is. And the other one is the Holy Spirit who guarantees that we belong to him and will receive all of his benefits, that's also in Ephesians chapter 1, 13 and 14. And so um, the great comfort and the power, the power of the Holy Spirit gives in this life, they're a foretaste, they're a down payment of, of what is to come. And, uh, and so what a, what, a, what a great promise, you know, that we, can, that we can always count in. I mean, that's what it says, 22. It says... He gave us the spirit in our hearts as a pledge, as a down payment, literally, like here, here you're on layaway with, uh, <laughs> with Jesus Christ. Like you're on layaway for heaven. God will pick you up at some point. <laughs> mm -hmm. He'll come and pay your bill in full, take you out of layaway, put you into the great place there beyond that. So uh, let's see. John here says uh, we don't have uh, many. Mm -hmm. Obesity Christian or, or obese oh. Christians from, from overeating of the word. Okay. <laughs> okay. There you go. From eating the word of God, ones I think most are on a diet. That's right. <laughs> yes. Yes, you like like we should be eating more salads. That's how we're that's how we're reading the word of God rather than like, woo, pile it on. Give me a give me a second helping. Give me, give me a bigger Bible. Give me a wagon to carry it in. Like, let me, let me drink it all in, eat it all up. So, well, that's, and also that's too, good. just because you've read it once doesn't mean if you reread it, you're not going to learn something new. That always happens. Oh my goodness, all the time. Yes. So, it, yes. and it's, I think it comes with your maturity as a Christian, things going on in your life, you know, yeah. things you've been through. It hits different. 
you're like, you were like, when, when, when did that go come in? <laughs> when did that get written in here? I don't remember that happening. And it's that because God so is saying, hello, you need to hear this today. That's why it is jumping off the page at you. Exactly. I love it. I love it. So, yeah, he says in 18, God is faithful. <clears throat> God is faithful. So, um, and then, and then in 19, it says, and Jesus uh, the Christ Jesus was, um, but yes in him. And so that's a, that's a great blessing as well. So <clears throat> I'm just trying to see what we have at the end. Um, it, it was talking about, um, now that we, uh, but our workers with you for your joy, for your, for in your faith, you are standing firm. So I, you know, I love it that, that he is that he is giving them some encouragement because you know in in um even in first corinthians there were some hard things he had to say some hard things mm -hmm. and he had to he had to clean up some stuff um and it was necessary and it was important and it still speaks to us today um but it doesn't that doesn't make it easy right it doesn't make it easy and so, and he's going to lay out, he's going to put a lot of his own feelings out um, in this book, in 2 Corinthians, and, um, and be very vulnerable, I'm even going to say, especially towards the end of the book. Paul's going to be very vulnerable and, and talk about, you know, his own journey. And so, it's, these are important things, um, and this is an important letter to an important church, um, because... The church in Corinth probably looks a lot like our churches today, just mm -hmm. saying. So um, that's not easy to hear, but but as our as our society um, erodes quickly, <laughs> yeah. As our as our values seem to be flushing well, not down our the values. No, but no, it's our society's society's values, values are becoming yeah. devalued. Yeah, absolutely, and you know, in in the in the gain of um, in, inclusivity, and you know, and and giving everybody like a putting everybody on the same playing field, that means that everybody's values are just as important, um, and we already know that that's not true. We already know intrinsically, right, that you know, to kill babies is is murder to you know to allow nine-year-olds to to change their gender um when you won't let them drive or vote or move out of the house or or get a credit card um doesn't make a lot of sense and so well the the real one that has me like i, I just i can't even i don't even understand it is that there that there is a push to um change the uh narrative for pedophiles yes making it making it okay and normal to for a an adult to be attracted to a child yeah and, and that's and yeah, it's they want to not and they 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 want to take the name pedophile away and i can't even remember what they wanted to call it like i don't know young child attraction i yeah. something the alphabet people want that <laughs> that's what i call that i just i i can't even i yeah. can't i can't so normalizing I mean, that behavior and saying that they can't help it um that's, that's just who they are that's the way that they were born that's and who they are um, and that it should be okay that they can prey on children yeah and so it's and and honestly, you know, I I I know that in a lot of um, in Roman times and Greek times, that was that was actually that was normalized as well. Oh, absolutely. So, There's a lot of things that were normalized in like in Rome mm -hmm. specifically that yeah. we are seeing today. A Nothing new under the sun. A resurgence of it today, and I'm like, well, you know what happened to Rome, right? <laughs> And with all of these communities, right? Um, you know, even Sodom and Gomorrah. So, it's uh, it's it's definitely hard. But here's the Apostle Paul 
speaking to this this really rough city um, and this baby church and saying, look, I, you know, like, l let me, let me give you some help again. And, you know, let me, but first he needed to set some things straight. He wasn't avoiding them. He's like, nope, there was a reason that I did what I did. And, uh, and it's, and it's not, and it's not because I'm wishy-washy. So these are, these are important things, but, you know, he says that he, um, yeah, he, he says he's, he's basically sparing them even is what he says in verse 23 in Second Corinthians uh, chapter 1. So we're, um, we're going to hear more about that in chapter 2, um, but we've got a great start here. We, we started off strong here in the first chapter of Second Corinthians and, and hoping that you'll join us next Tuesday for chapter 2. That would be great. That would be great. Tomorrow night um, at 7, um, we're studying Revelation, and we are also in Chapter 2 of Revelation. So i um, hoping that you'll join us. Um, it's, it's quite the book. It's quite the book. But here's what is always wonderful is that right in the beginning, it says that there's a special blessing uh, for those that read mm -hmm. um, Revelation or hear or hear it being read. So hallelujah, we're doing that and we're counting on that special blessing. That'd be good for right now, just saying, right? Um, and then on Thursday night, uh, Dan and Gay are almost done with Leviticus. I think they're in the final two chapters. Um, so don't miss their wrap up. It is powerful and Leviticus is a funky, strong, mm -hmm. powerful book. Um, there's a lot of stuff in there that I'm always like, what that's in there yes it's all in there so <laughs> anyway join them and then sunday at five you can always come right back here wherever you are um and you can watch our worship service we would love to have you with us so so thanks everybody thank you so much we will see you next week we will see you next tuesday at seven o'clock bye bye <laughs>